today uh, we're installing the uh, dodai, which is the foundation uh, structure assembly. And what you can see behind me is some of the beams that we're going to be installing today. And I'm using this special drill bit, the conical cutting edge right here at the end of the bit. And of course you have this auger bit in the top. But this is, uh, you can see these, um, these threaded rods cemented into the, uh, into the concrete slab. And uh, these cemented rods are going to have a nut that goes on top of it called a zabori. And that's what's going to clamp this system against the concrete. It's not going to sit right on top of the concrete, the wood. There's going to be some form of um, what's called packing or a, a shim that they're going to put underneath to elevate the wood off of these uh, concrete slab. So here's the threaded rod and this threaded rod is what we're going to put the doldai or the wood foundation structure around. And this drill bit is what we're going to use to drill the spots. And Kaito is working on lining everything up so that all I have to do is go around drilling and um, setting the holes. So right here is the hole that I have to drill for what's going to be where the threaded rods are going to come through. And this line is a line that I'm going to follow because the threaded rods, some of them are not straight. So you have to uh, kind of match that profile of the line. So I'm going to drill right here. And this is Hinoki that we're drilling into. It's quite nice. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because it gets stuck around this bit. And this right here is that specialized nut. And what you do is you'll put the threaded rod through this hole drop this on here and then tighten it down with an impact gun. This circle is going to be where a zabori is going to go and then this part right here where it says HD that's a hold down and they're typically uh, a lot longer threaded rod but you don't use a zabori to uh, keep that uh, there. So I'm going to use a different drill to do this hole. This threaded rod is about 15 uh, millimeters in diameter. The other threaded rods are only 10 millimeters. So I'll do the Zabori one first, and then I'll do this hold down second. This one is a uh, much wider diameter bit. It's 20 millimeters. And we're gonna drill this uh, hold down hole. So this is the piece that I'm working on. This black line is the reference mark. This is done with a piece of chalk, uh, snapping a line along this concrete uh, siding right here. And what that indicates to us is the edge of the uh, dodai, which these uh, beams are 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters. So the edge has to line up right with this black line. This arrow right here indicates to the carpenter that you need to set that dodai on this side of the line because you can kind of see two, two marks here. So when you snap the line, sometimes it shakes a little bit so you have two lines sitting here. But this tells me that you want to set the dodai on this edge of the line. And they mark this everywhere, right? So they'll use a um, chalk on all sections that they can mark a line on. And they always do one edge of the dodai. Otherwise, if you did it in the middle, you wouldn't be able to see it. That being said, these threaded rods that you see right here, a lot of times when the uh, concrete people pour this, they don't necessarily set the rod perfectly in the middle of this concrete slab. 
So sometimes the threaded rod is closer to this side or further away, more towards the edge. Um, in this case, a lot of these threaded rods are, are very well in line, but there's still, you know, a little bit of room for wiggle. So what Kaito-san is doing is, since he knows this is the reference line for where the edge of the die is going to be, he's measuring from this line, this edge, to the center of bolt, or the threaded rod. And he knows in millimeters how far that distance is. So when he lines up the dodai um, as a reference, he'll mark that with his sashigane to note where I should drill the hole for the zabori. So each one of these is a little bit different. You know, it could be 54 millimeters, some could be 63. So you have to make note of that. Otherwise, if I start drilling and I drill in the wrong spot, when we start sliding that dough die around the threaded rods, it won't slide on perfectly and it'll be very difficult to put it on. So this is a very important step. Step one, snap a chalk line and set your reference grid. Step two, put your dough die next to the threaded rods where it would be, make your marks, and then from there, uh, measure how far into the dough die you want to make your drill your hole, and then drill your hole. After we get everything drilled out and everything spaced uh, perfectly, we're going to go around and put chestnut packing um, underneath the dodai because you don't want this foundation structure to touch the concrete because concrete absorbs uh, moisture and it absorbs water. So we're going to use chestnut which is a very hard wood and uh, very water resistant and that will be used to space it off of this concrete slab. Some of the joinery that you'll see here um, that we're working with for the foundation structure. Um, this is very common for uh, traditional houses. Not traditional because traditional you, you put it on top of stones. But in this case, for this type of structure, we're using very um, unique joints but uh, very common joints. So this right here, you'll have two komisens that'll bind these two sections of wood together. You also have right here an adi. These adis are a little bit different than most because they're a tapered adi. It's uh, got a taper to it. So it's got a little bit of an angle. And it's a lot wider than a normal adi that you would see in Japan or Japanese construction. Here's the adi I was talking about. This is a tapered adi. And it'll slide right into this joint right here. You have this edge here. This profile, um, I noticed this was this kind of profile was put into the uh, dodai in sections where you don't have concrete underneath. So this provides an additional, I guess, security so that this won't fall through. And in this case, the weight will be on this edge and not on the actual dovetail itself or this adi. Um, and that's important because what you can see here is there's no concrete below this section. You'll see in other areas where that tapered Audi is located, you'll see a concrete uh, slab right underneath it providing uh, adequate support. So we alternate 
the uh, comey sand. One comes from this side, and the other one comes from the other side. I have in my hand here kayaki wood, which is the packing that's used in uh, to separate the concrete foundation from the actual dodai. This uh, kayaki has a number on it, and this one says 22. That means this is the thickness 22 millimeters. This is all predetermined, and they measure it out um, using a laser, and they uh, check uh, the height differential of the concrete uh, slab. In this case, the concrete slab is no different than uh, uh, five millimeters um, at the high point and uh, five millimeters less at the low point. The uh, zabori bolt, when you uh, or the zabori nut, which is this nut right here, um, you want to make sure that uh, you use a impact gun that's corded. A cordless impact gun, when you use it, um, it'll wear down the motor or it'll even break your tool. Um, it's just not enough torque in those uh, cordless um, battery powered uh, impact guns to tighten this bolt down. You're really actually, when you're pushing that bolt down, you're spreading out that, uh, that wood and it's kind of flaring a little bit. So what we did is we went around and we took a uh, rubber mallet or a stressless hammer as they call it. And you have a line that was drawn with chalk. And what we do is as we go around and tighten each one of these bolts, we hit from either side, depending on where we want it to line up, and we make sure that it coincides with that chalk line, the edge of this wood here. And then all the while, there's joints here that are just uh, adi, that are sitting there waiting for a pillar to actually slide in. And those areas are where the Toshibashira are gonna go. The Toshibashira are the Hashira, or the pillars, that span two stories. And they're typically associated on the corners of the house. So you'll see a Toshibashira on all four corners. You also have the Daikokubashira, and you have two Daikokubashiras here, which is the main pillars of the house that are typically found near the center of the home, and usually where the living space is. Uh, in this case, there's two Daikokubashiras located um, pretty evenly spaced out in the center of the house. When we do do the uh, lining up the uh, dodai and then um, rat, uh, uh, pushing down those bolts, the zavori bolt or the zavori nut, we measure that particular spot to make sure that when we do pick up the toshibashira or the daikokubashira with the crane, um, we don't have to move the uh, dodai or change anything. Hopefully it just slides right in. So we double check the measurement in those particular spots and we hammer it with the uh, stressless hammer and beat it to whichever way we need it to sit. I'm squatting next to one of the corners here and this is where the one Toshibashira is gonna sit. And you can see how it's just a uh, adi or a dovetail connection that's um, just sitting here to receive the uh, actual pillar that's gonna slide in over here. And when I was talking about measuring this spot, uh, we know the measurement of the Daikoku Bashira during the uh, uh, Sumitsuke and the Kizami part. So we're able to estimate for the size of that pillar as it's going to slide in right here. 